President. Folks, the media's always been liberal. We know that. When you get into this business and you're a guy like me, you know the media's not going to like you. Big deal. That's part of the game. The media's always been left. But the media three years ago fell in love with this president. And they will go after our nominee with everything they got. It will be ugly. They will look at everything our nominee's done going back to fifth grade. It will be that ugly. Say a prayer for our nominee. Look. Look, we have to do a better job of telling the American people this country out here that we love is broken. And that thing there called government is too big and it's going to kill Reese's generation. We have to do a better job of making that case. And if we can effectively do that, I think there are enough Americans who will support us. We know the math. 35% of the people that are going to vote in November will vote for Obama even if he's not breathing. 35% of the vote is going to vote for the Republican even if he or she isn't breathing. He got all these people in the middle. And what polls tell us is these people in the middle, hang in there, even if there's a part of them that still wants to personally like this president, on every single issue they disagree with them. Like us, they want to be drilling outside this window. Like us, they want Obamacare repealed. Like us, they want every single dastardly thing the EPA has done to our small businesses repealed. They're with us on the issues. You want to win, you want to beat Obama, focus on these issues, and we got one last chance to beat them. Other thoughts, issues, questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm Cindy, I'm from Ward County down in Southern Indiana. This morning I was at a meeting with our current Congressman, I want to thank Joe because he is a fresh breath of fresh air. Our current congressman said there was no hope. He had no hope for us as long as we didn't have the Senate and the presidency because the House couldn't do anything. Thank you for saying you have hope. And you know the House can do something, even if we have to fight. Because he has no fight in him at all. Well, here's what I know. If all we do is keep the House after November, and we lose the presidency, and we lose the Senate, then it's, oh, you talk about then a battle. Then I want my speaker every single day saying, Mr. President, you ain't getting to die. I want, I, then, then, it's, then it's an all-out fist fight. But the primary reason why I have hope, got to be honest, has nothing to do with where I work. Oh my God, come, I'll fly you all to Washington with me for a week. You'll walk out of there and you'll be hopeless. It's not that city. If you want to save this thing, you will save it. But he doesn't even have that kind of hope. You will. You will save it. The movement will say this thing. Yes. We all think we're the greatest thing since sliced bread. All we are, are we're, we're, we're your voice. Exactly. So to we need a new rep. To save this country, you be the, you be the savior. Yes, sir. Well, I don't want to bring up Boehner and McConnell too much here, but there seems to be a situation where they're working against the Tea Party or for the new Congress, uh, the new congressmen, people like yourself. Because uh, it was in the news that there was redistricting in Florida by the Republican state legislature, and it was uh, going to be detrimental to uh, what is it? Uh, Illinois. Illinois. And what was John Boehner doing in Illinois, talking to Speaker Michael Madigan, the head of the Democrat Party, uh, about redistricting in Illinois? 
Um, I, can, I can just speak for Illinois. Uh, we waged a huge legal battle to overturn the debt map. Uh, and our speaker and our leadership in Washington was 130% behind us. Don't know, I can't even talk about what went on down in Florida. Um, look, I, 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 I the words well, I don't careful. Want to put you on the spot, but no, no, no. I, yeah. Do I mind being put on the spot? <laughs> the word "careful" doesn't often be paired with Joe Walsh. Um, and there's been I don't I cannot think of another freshman that has gone to Washington and just screamed like I have, and oftentimes directed at my own party. But I want it to yeah, be. I don't want you to lose your passion. I don't want you to lose your anger. Anger is good. But I'm going to ask you in this war, in this revolution, to save this thing. Be somewhat strategic as well. Be somewhat strategic. And to me, this is just me talking. Here's an example of not being very strategic. I can't stand Obama. He was born in uh, wherever, and uh, we got impeached. Now, if you go around saying that, the next, by the way, that might be a If you go around, if we as a movement go around and say that for the next eight to nine months, I'm not a betting man, but I don't like our odds in November. If you say respectfully, this president has no clue as to what makes this country tick. He doesn't understand America. He doesn't, he didn't grow up like we grew up. Um, and, and all I know is he's trying to regulate and suffocate this country. And we focus on the issues and the policies. You know what? I think we'll beat him. I really do. I want you to be impatient with what we've done. I said all the time when I, I've, I've said all the time since I got elected, your job as the leaders in getting this country back is to whack us upside the head as much as you can, but to also give us a hug just to let us know that you know we're trying. Um, think of, don't, don't think, be a little bit more strategic, and I think we'll be more successful. That's hard for me to say. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What else gives people hope is that they understand the election process, and how it works, and how the government process works. Because a lot of people don't even understand. Polls don't mean anything. Straw polls mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. If you if you don't gain the delegates in a county and in a state and on a national level, it means nothing. When you, once you have those delegates, that's where you win. It doesn't matter if Fox News or the Communist News Network says that someone won a poll. That doesn't matter. It's how many delegates you have. Take heart. Uh, in the purple, you made a great point about the president's polls. Take heart. I can tell you, this White House is scared to death about getting reelected. Absolutely. And look at, you gotta just look, look again, be smart. We're in a war. Hey, if you think this is just an election, go find another job. We are in a war right now, damn it, to save this country. And it's not just, when you're in a war, it's not like you're just sitting there pounding every minute of every day. Sometimes you huddle and you think and you strategize. And you look at what the other side's doing. You look at what they're doing, and look at what this president's been doing. Folks, this Occupy Wall Street crap didn't just happen by accident. And this president and the Democrats tried to embrace it. They were part of it. Look what this president's doing. He's running on class warfare. Remember all those people in the middle? They don't buy class warfare. So what does that tell you this president's doing? That means he thinks he's lost the people in the middle. What's he doing? He's over here trying to rev up his crazy radical base. That's a good thing. That means they know they're in trouble. Watch what they're doing. Let's us be smart. Yeah. 
just remember, folks, he just made about, um, oh, I don't know, a half a million Catholic Democrats mad this week. Hey, I got to tell you, as a member of my Catholic Church, my priests tend not to get very involved politically. They shy away from it. And too many of too many of my Catholic brethren buy into a lot of this big government stuff. I've never seen them this wound up. Still, every week in every pulpit, Catholic priests are talking about this trampling on religious freedom. This is going to be a good big issue. Because it, again, everybody, it goes to the core of who we are as a country. Amen. If you can take away my ability to worship and pray and practice my faith, there's no stopping anything. I said, this shows how smart I am, during the last presidential campaign, when this president said, about all those people in middle America who cling to their God and cling to their guns, I jumped up, turned to my wife, and said, we won! <laughs> we won! Because he doesn't understand America. Folks, this country was founded by religious nuts with guns. That's who we are. I think the health care bill, I mean, I, and I agree with the religious thing that the Catholics are in, I 100% support it, but it's a lot bigger than that. Huge! Much bigger! Because you are going to supposedly be forced, if it goes through and it is activated, you're going to be forced to get in the program, otherwise you will be fined so many hundreds or thousand dollars a year. Right. And if you don't do either one, supposedly they're going to come, put handcuffs on you, and take you to prison. But on the other hand, if you do get in the program, you're going to be like sheep. They're going to tell you when to go get a flu shot. They're going to tell you when to go have a heart bypass. They're going to tell you what to eat. They're going to monitor how many cigarettes you smoke a day. They're going to monitor how much alcohol you drink a day. And if you are over their limit, some of us are in trouble. You're going to be, you're going to be a high risk. You're making a lot of people in the front row nervous. I think most of those people in the front row already know what I'm talking about. Hey, they know exactly what you're talking about, and you, my friend, nailed it more than anybody I've heard talk in Washington. Look, it is all about freedom of religion, but it's bigger. It is about government control. Look. I just have one last statement. By the way. I will not get in the program, and I will not pay their fines. So they better have a bed in prison for me, because I'm going. Yeah. I will not do either one. That's the ultimate absurdity of this other America they created. At the end of the day, are they going to be able to force us to do what we want with our lives? At the end of the day, who is a Catholic priest going to answer to? His God or his government? 2010, Obamacare was the final straw. And that got us elected. I truly believe Republicans win this year if we make this election about Obamacare. It crystallizes this whole issue of we are in charge of our lives or the government controls every decision we make. You are exactly, exactly right. And I hope the American people get as wound up about that as they did two years ago. Yes, sir. You can't make it about Obamacare if we nominate the grandfather of Obamacare. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. How? Um, because he'll repeal it. And you got to believe that. Oh, hold on. But how can you get him elected? Huh? Uh, if, if they're running in the oh, wait, by the way, by the way, by the way, 
God, I'm not going to sit there. I don't have a, I don't have a dog in the fight. I understand. I think each one of these candidates has strengths and has weaknesses. You've identified one of Romney's weaknesses. And I think, hold on, you're right. And I think he's probably done a pretty lousy job of defending that or explaining it. But again, folks, I, 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 oh my God, we'd be, we would be here at 11 o'clock at night if we, if we look at each one of these guys' weaknesses. They all have them. Gingrich. <laughs> Gingrich has them. Santorum has them. Paul has them. I'm saying they all have weaknesses when it comes to getting elected. And I got my own little bias as to who I think can get elected best, but we all have our own opinions. But I, I'm just going to, I'm going to acknowledge that that is a big problem for him. But I'm going to plead with you, and I'm going to drive back down to Indiana the, if, if he is our nominee and implore with you to get him elected. Because four more years of this guy we may not recover from. Why oh, agree with you? Then, then, <laughs> be there with me. And it's hard for me to say. I Look, I don't want a messiah. I know where my Messiah is, right? I don't, I, I don't want to get another in this country. So many people in this country were looking for a Messiah to call see the jokes. The minute Obama got elected, they're not jokes. There were people literally saying, where's my free health care? The day after he was elected. That's not us. That's not who we are. And quit looking for another Ronald Reagan. If you want to save this country, you are going to do it. You are going to do it. So you brought up the strength of uh, the Republican leadership in the House to impeach this president. Senate. Not yeah. Yeah. You know, again, again not, not at all focusing on impeachment itself with this president. Uh, privately, you and I may agree on a lot of things. Um, I think it's, I think that leadership agrees with me and agrees with a lot of us that we literally are in war to save this country. And I know that because we, I meet with them privately every week in Washington. And so like generals and lieutenants in the war, they're trying to figure out how do we win the war. And they've made the determination that the next most important victory in this war is to win the White House. And they've made the calculation that to win the White House, and I agree with them on this, the best chance we got to beat Obama is to beat him on the issues in November. If we want to focus about where he was born, about where his father was born, about all these offenses that may or may not be impeachable, if we focus on that stuff, there are people in Washington who believe we will lose a lot of people and we'll lose the election. You may disagree with that. I'm just giving you an answer as to the other what, what the other side thinks. So it is a it is a strategic decision to try to win this war. And I'm telling you guys, you're you're not you weren't gonna change the world in 2010. I went to Washington wanting to change the world. It's why I have a full head of gray hair. My hair was black six months ago. <laughs> You're not going to win the war after November. I think the next most important victory in the war is to get this guy out of the White House. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's best done by saying, look, baby, how dare you? How dare you put the government in charge of all of our lives? I want Obamacare repeal, and most Americans agree with us. Most Americans want us drilling, they want us exploring natural gas, they want to put this country to work. And they know that this president has regulated the hell out of small businesses. Focus on these things and we'll win the election. Just my opinion. Yes, sir. Talk about issues. How we stand, how we stand with the Keystone Pipeline that Obama put a stop to? <laughs> again, again, we're in a war to save our country. Exactly. He made a mistake. Let's take advantage. He basically stuck his middle finger up again at working Americans. 
20,000 of them immediately. Big mistake on his part. Come on, Republicans, let the American people know that. And they need to talk about that more, and, and they don't know how to do it. I, I think uh, if they bring that up at, at, at election time and talk about our oil dependency and, and, and get the room to get the uh, putting 20,000 people out of work, they need to bring up them issues. Because there are, hey, there's about 13 Keystones lined up right behind Keystone. This country could be put to work like this, yeah. but this president will not let us go after our own abundant resources. Why? Why? Because he's in the pocket of crazy environmentalists yeah. who want to shut our economy down. Yeah. Say that! Yeah. Say that! We got it. What else? <coughs> hey, where's Beth? Reese! Who's crowd control? Are you crowd control? <laughs> How are we doing on time? I'm fine. You guys get more to keep me out here. Yes, sir. Okay. As Republican nominee, has to be supported 100%. 100%. We cannot have an independent party run or we will lose. I know, here comes the hook. <laughs> um, I agree. And again, let me just tell you, three years ago, if you told me there's no way I'm voting for John McCain, because he doesn't get what we know in here. I'd have been right there with you. I agree. I agree. But folks, the world has changed in three years. Again, I, I always try to stay respectful. I don't know this president. I've met him once he's tall. But I know, I know he doesn't understand this country. And now, 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 but now, here's the beauty, folks. Now we have the proof. We didn't have the proof three years ago. For those of us who said, you know, cling to their God and their guns, this Reverend Wright, he wants to regulate us. He actually said, I'm going to raise the tax on capital gains, even if it doesn't bring in more revenue, because it's fair. Though there were a lot of us who knew but most Americans didn't know. Because remember, he really didn't do much before he got elected. <laughs> now we know. Rejoice in that. Rejoice. Um, and then I'll stick around for a little bit. Let me just close with this one thought. Uh, Harry Reid said one of the most beautiful funniest things any of them said last year. Again, he was talking about all the Tea Party terrorists like me. Um, do you believe they actually called us that? Yeah. 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 Hey, 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 again, smile. That's good. That means they're losing it. He actually said about guys like me, he said, I can't work with them because they don't care about their next election. <laughs> how true, but how beautiful is that? You had a bunch of us folks who went to Washington two years ago not giving a darn about our next election. This job ain't that much fun. <laughs> we are there to only play our role in this war to save this country. And if that means we make decisions that, I can't say that word because it makes my mom mad, that tick people off or that send us back home, so be it. Then I'm going to be sitting on that side of the stage continuing to wage war. I go to bed every night wishing, I play a little game with myself, wishing I were a Democrat. <laughs> hey, hey! Listen to the punchline. Imagine how easy it would be to be a Democrat congressman. I would spend every minute of every day giving people pays. Oh my God! You want a hey, hey, that student loan your kids having a hard time with? Here, I will bail them out. You're behind on your mortgage? Here, I will give you this. Free health care, I will give you. 
They walk around and they give people things. And they've been doing it year after year. What an easy thing to do. How much does it cost? Oh, I don't care. Is it going to be good for the person I bail out? Oh, I don't care. I just give things. <laughs> And you know, we all rag on Republicans because when it comes to marketing, we do a lousy job, right? Yes. We do. <coughs> but always know how tougher our job is. You're a Democrat, it's like you're giving candy away every day. <laughs> Woohoo! Here you go, Reese. Every day is Halloween. I'm giving candy away. I don't care about what it does to future generations. You're a Republican, you know, you're asking people to take some medicine. I'm a Republican. And I actually have to say to people who vote for me, I ain't giving you a damn thing. <laughs> I know I lost some votes because I said this to people during the campaign. I'm not going to give you anything. My job is to go there and to limit what they take from you. And then I want you to be in charge of your life. 